Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. We are going to do a little Q&A today. And I thought I would try and answer your burning questions. Now, please listen. I am going to give you my opinion or my thoughts on something, but that doesn't mean that it is the gospel, right? Um, I can't say 100% for certain on everything, but I'm going to tell you of my experiences. So just don't eat me alive, okay? Because I will eat you back. I got my sassy pants on today. Beware, I have my sassy pants on today. The very first question came from Michelle C198. And it says, what are all the pink ground cover flowers in your front beds called? I've been looking for a flower like that to fill in your bare areas, love all your flowers. I did not grow those from seed. Those are Proven Winners, Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum, and they are magnificent. Those flowers, I believe on one side I have five plants and the other maybe six or seven, and they filled in and bloomed all summer long. The most magnificent show of color. Now, this year I have a dilemma and maybe proven winners, if you're listening to this or watching this, I have deer. My, we had to put our dog to sleep and that, I didn't realize how much dogs deter deer. And so now they are coming in my front yard, in my backyard, and they are eating everything. I am spraying liquid fence. And um, I just, I read that they do love petunias. And I am devastated. That was my favorite, my most favorite. And so I don't know, is there an alternative um, spray or does anyone have experience with, I'm supposed to be answering the questions, but I'm going to ask you questions too. I forgot to tell you that part. Uh, anybody have any experience with petunias and deer? Uh, Super Tunia Vista to be specific and uh, any help you can provide. Winter sewing. Someone asked a question, which a lot of you asked, from Faye Garrett in Marietta, Georgia. I just made up Marietta, Georgia. <laughs> I don't even know where I got that from. It doesn't even say Marietta. Sorry, Faye. Bless. Okay. It says, hi, Kim. It is March 19th today, and I am in Georgia, zone 8A. Same. Is it too late for me to start flower seeds in milk jugs? I just couldn't get to it before now. Love your videos and trust your advice. Thank you so much. I'm still sewing my winter sewing jugs. And I realized that I am almost a, a month away from my last frost and I'm still sewing my winter sewing jugs. I don't think that there are any rules. There are a lot of people that like to make rules. I'm not a rule follower. I like to push the envelope. I say that all the time. And really and truly, I think, you know, if, if worse comes to worse, you open the container. If it gets too warm and you're past your frost date and you're ready to plant, you open the container and there it's going to act like a little seed tray, right? So um, I just don't think you have anything to lose by going ahead and starting them now. Uh, it just helps you not have to acclimate them to the outdoor uh, from the indoor trays. So why not? I mean, I say go for it. So my advice to you, because you trust my advice, which I'm sure my friends are laughing saying like, anyway, they don't really know. They don't know plants. They don't like plants. I need new friends. That's why you're all my friends, right? We're going to be friends because I'm ditching my old ones. The crepe murder video. I've gotten such ugly comments and you know what I just decided to do? I just delete them. I'm not even, I agonized over them for a little while and then I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not putting up with that. I'm not mean to you. You're not going to be mean to me. So I just delete them. But what I want to say is, listen, crepe murder is when you take a chainsaw or something and you give a crepe myrtle a flat top. Please, if you hear the sound of my voice in this video, I'm going to be your mom right now. Please don't do it. Just say no. Don't do it. If you have already done it, you don't, you didn't know, okay? When you know better, you do better, right? It's okay. Give yourself some grace. 
We all make mistakes. Lord knows I make them. I'm going to make them. I'm probably making them today. I don't know. But it's okay. It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to try something and fail as long as you try again, right? Crepe murder, it, it weakens the tree. And if that's your preference, then go for it. But I am here to show you that it has been researched to the nth degree that it is not good for the health of the crepe myrtle. You're going to do what you're going to do. If you have taken a chainsaw to it, it is okay. Watch the video. I will link it below. There is a video that I talked with an arborist who talks about how to do if you have murdered your tree. If it is still growing and is okay, there is a way you can fix that, okay? So, don't send me hate comments. If you want to crate murder your tree, you do you. If you want to know the way that the research, the, the scientists, the people that do the experiments on the trees, the arborists, the certified people, the professional professionals of the crate murders, <laughs> of the crepe myrtles. They say don't do this. And I can show you with 100% confidence the difference between what one looks like that has not been murdered and then one that has been. The, the branches are so much smaller. There's so many more of them and they're, they're weaker. I did not show in my video the proper way to prune because I had already put together a tutorial on crepe myrtles. People were saying like, oh, you didn't say how you should do it, but I do reference in that many, many times, and I linked below the video of the one that I do show how to prune. At the end of the day, we don't have to get hateful over it. You do you. I'm going to do me, and I'm going to put out the right way to prune. Thank you again for the 10,000 subscribers. I love all of your comments. I love all of you so much. You make my heart so happy. And I am glad that, you know, so many of you said that you agreed that it is a lonely world out there. And if you need a friend, I will be your friend. I just want you to know that. Um, you know, I, some sometimes you sit back and think about like, being an adult, it is hard to make friends. And if I can be your friend, even through a camera, I want you to know, <laughs> I wish I could open up my heart and show you. I am so genuinely happy to be here. And I am genuinely telling you that I want friends. And I'm asking you guys to be my friend and I will be your friend. And I don't know. It's just the world feels so much better when you have people that you can talk to about plants. It's so exciting. So thank you so much for being here. And I genuinely mean it. If you need a friend, I'll be your friend. And I hope you'll be my friend too. I had such a massive response from my video, Seed to Bloom. And it's where I showed the seed pack like this, showed the seed pack, and then I showed what it looks like blooming. And the response was insane. And I have so many comments, but one that I wanted to highlight is Cher Hammond. It says, great tips, especially for a newbie, LOL. I garden every year and love it, but I have never grown from seed. I will most likely direct sow, but honestly, I'm going to try some of my seeds coming up here in containers. Just going to experiment and have fun. I love your videos and can't wait to follow along. Thank you for sharing. I love that you have been gardening a long time, but that you are new to starting seeds and that you've never done that before. I have gardened like you. I have gardened my entire life and have only started flowers from seed for three years now. And to me, that's mind blowing. The amount of plants and the varieties and for such an inexpensive amount of money, uh, because all really you are spending is your soil and the seed pack cost. And the seeds last from season to season. I want to encourage you to do like you said, have a good time, experiment, but don't wait, don't put off what is the quote? Don't put off to tomorrow what can be done today. Try your seeds. Try them even just a little bit. I, I did want to share with you. 
I picked this little tray up at the Dollar Tree. And this is a little mini greenhouse, a little mini seed starting dome. Maybe grab one of these. It was $1.25. Maybe start some seeds. Grab a seed pack and get the American seed. Cosmos. So I got these at the Dollar Tree last year. Side note, poke some holes in this. There are no drainage holes in this and do not plant just in this and not put drainage holes because your plants will drown. But maybe grab an inexpensive seed pack. This was 25 cents. This was $1.25, your soil. So we'll say for about $2, you could start some seeds and you could have a whole flat that would cost you I don't know. These days, it's like $20. Not really. I'm being dramatic, but maybe I'm not. I don't know. I haven't since I've been starting my own seeds. So, just want to thank you for your comment and encourage you to try your seed starting. This is from Steve Hale, 4086. My weather is hot and cold in Central Texas. Do I need to put them in the shade or sunlight? I always put mine in the sunlight, in the dappled sun. Um, as you start to get to the point where you are getting closer to your last frost date, you need to put them in the full sun. They need to start getting, if they're full sun plants, if they're shade plants, keep them in the shade. But I like to go ahead and get that stage set where they are getting what they're going to get, even though the containers do make them hotter by a little bit, I, I always put them in the sun. So I started out in the shade. Now that we're getting closer, I'm a month away. I put them in the sun. Marianne Dash HV1VQ said, would I start seeds the same time it says on the back of the packet like I would for indoor planting? Like foxglove, it says six to eight weeks before last frost. So same for winter sowing. I am in Northern Virginia 6B7A. My thought is probably different than anybody else. I start them all at the same time. I do, I, sometimes if I'm really organized, I will start them as they say, but I kind of throw caution to the wind. I, the first year I winter sowed, I didn't know better and I started them all at the same time and it was fine. The seeds lay dormant in the soil until the soil warms up enough for them to germinate. We're mimicking nature, remember that. And so they know, the seeds know, okay, it's warm, it's cozy, the soil temperature is great, it's time to rise and shine. So you don't have to worry about going through 10 weeks, eight weeks, whatever. Do it when it's best for you. And if the soil warms and, and um, gets colder like it has this year for so many of us, then you may have to do a few workarounds. But for a little while, at least, you should have just seeds lying dormant in the ground as they do in nature. I hope that helps you. So my answer is no, I don't wait and follow the back of the seed pack all the time. I have before this year. I did a little bit and then I kind of threw caution to the wind and just started everything because I had some time to get it done. So do what works best for you. You don't have to uh, technically at all. M. Garsbert one. Absolutely in love with your zinnias. Where did you buy the seeds for zinnias? When would I plant them? What month? March maybe? I am in zone 8A. How long do they last? Other question. Do you, do you, I have to plant seeds every year? How does it work? Zinnias are great starting from seed in containers. They're easy to start in the winter sowing jugs, but they are just as easy to till up your patch in your garden and direct sow them and they, they grow and they germinate within a matter of weeks. It is insane, insane, insane. So for me, if you're talking about as I walked in the garden on the left, was a big patch of zinnias. I showed those in a lot of my videos. I direct sowed those and I did that in the first week of May. And by mid-June, I had blooms and they bloomed and bloomed and bloomed until I planted them too close together. I know I did, I know it was my fault, uh, but they got powdery mildew and they all died. 
And so this year I'm going to have to make triple sure that I am trading and that I space them apart. I just love the look of just a mass of zinnias, but it just, it, it, it took them out. And so I went from having beautiful zinnias in a matter of a week to none. And people said, spray milk on them, spray this, that. I honestly was just at a loss. And I think by the time I realized what was happening, it was too late. So please know that zinnias need good airflow. And there are some that are resistant to that. So if you want to grow zinnias, I bought mine at the Dollar Tree. I have bought them at Lowe's, Home Depot, and Walmart. And this year I was looking online at Johnny's Seeds and they do have the disease resistant ones. So I'm going to order those. I do direct sow my uh, zinnias. So I do have a little bit of time to order those seeds. So I hope that helps you and I wish you the best. Be sure you space them properly and stay on top of your spray game. So that concludes our Q&A, our conversation, hanging out, becoming best friends, all the things plants and buddies do. So I am, I just wanted to make you aware of a couple of things that are coming up. Number one, I am working very hard on my winter sewing video, editing it. I want it to be great for you guys. So I realized I didn't cover everything and uh, so I need to finish that. Hopefully I'll have that out in the next few days. I hope to have had it out today, didn't happen. Number two, I am so excited to be putting together some mini courses. So I am doing a Landscape Design 101. If you are interested in learning how to design, how to think through designing, if you just wanna work on a project, I'm putting together a course for that and uh, I'm just working on the platform right now, so I'm almost done with that and should have that very, very soon. I'm also going to offer a seed starting course and that is going to be carrying us through, arming us with knowledge and learning how to sow seeds from the very, very beginning. If you are a basic beginner, if you have no idea what you're doing or if you need a refresh on how to care for your seedlings, when to take the dome off, all the things seed starting, this class is for you. It's all gonna be online, all at your own pace, and I am really excited to offer that to you in the next couple of days. I have always wanted to be a teacher, and so I have found a way to marry both my passions of plants and teaching, and I am bringing you a community um, just for us gardeners so we can be friends, hang out, and learn from each other. So I want to thank you so much. My last thing that I want to talk to you about is an ask of you. I would love to ask you for your knowledge. Would you share with me what your favorite flower to start from seed is? It can be winter sowing. It can be start starting in seed trays, and I would love to hear from you. So tell me what zone you're in and what method you start these seeds by. And if you have never started seeds, what seeds would you love to learn to start from seed? So put in there in the comment if you are interested in either course or any course. And if you have any suggestions on videos, I'd love to hear them. And I hope you have a chance to go out and get your hands dirty. Start thinking about spring. Let me know if you want to take a course and I will see you in another video soon. Take care.